Hello, uh, I'm super thrilled to have you here. Uh, very excited about the talk we're having today. A little reminder, this is a conversation, not a monologue or dialogue. Therefore, I need you to be present and interact with our guests just by raising your emoji hands. Just please, please let our speaker uh, finish the presentation first and answer my questions. So here was actually the part where I would like to take a group photo. And the idea was to everybody to open your cameras and ask the, each participant to mark the flag of the country uh, they're currently in on this emoji option. But unfortunately, uh, uh, Zoom hasn't got many of um, flags uh, on their app. So this is something we're gonna tell them. Uh, that would be great. So I'm gonna just ask everybody to turn on the cameras, uh, just for me to take one picture. Teia, Timo, Manuela, Susana. I'm gonna wait for you. Don't be shy. Thank you. Thank you, Teia. Let me just see. Perfect. I don't know if Susana and Timo, if they can open their cameras. No, okay. Let me take one, cheese. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Akatoro Chukini, uh, CEO of the event company Muppet, and I will be your host for today's discussion. I'm very honored to be invited by Sposa uh, Legal and Venture, Slovenian point of contact for the Slovenian Global Business Network. The network, uh, which was founded by Dr. Stefan Schale, together with Dr. Peter Kralic and Ambassador Elias Kosla. Thank you all to participants and our hosts for joining us on today's 11th episode of Slovenian Global Business, Slovenian Business Women Around the Globe. The program launched on International Women's Day in 2021, organized by the Slovenian Global Business Network. And I'm very privileged to host uh, today's my ninth episode. So, uh, and to date, the program has been carried out with very positive results. Uh, we have hosted successful women, uh, Slovenian women, who are mark, making a mark in the business world, both on domestic and international business market. This program uh, is supported by Orat uh, Vlade Republika Slovenije za Slovence v zamejstvu in posvetu, Government's Office of the Republic of Slovenia for Slovenians abroad. To bring even more dynamics to this program, uh, an excellent collaboration was concluded with two more hosts, Teja Pirnat and her team from Institute Zavod Sweden and Tjata Sterle from Future Female Slovenia. Please stay tuned to see what Teja and her team and Tjata are preparing for the next episodes of Slovenian Business Women Around the Globe. So you're not new to this platform, so I won't repeat the ground rules. Just make sure you keep the microphones off during the speaker's presentation. I'm privileged to welcome our first guest, Zlata Taucher, born in capital of Slovenia, Ljubljana, the co-founder of the co-founder and general manager at Tax Finlex, the legal and business portal with the entire legislation and professional training. So thank you for accepting our invitation. Uh, we're, very, we're very happy to have you here. So please go ahead with your presentation. The word is yours, Ms. Dutch. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Matea. Uh, hello to everybody. Thank you for invitation. Um, here is my presentation. I will talk about our firm, about our portal, TaxFilex. Legal business portal is this publishing and professional education. Um, our agenda is such like you see it on the slide. First about me, then about company, then about portal. We have a lot of activities on, in the portal. 
Then about the numbers on the portal, sales model, income, clients, uh, then about our team, and of course about our plans. Uh, well, Matea said some words about me. Okay, I completed university uh, studies at the Faculty of Economics of the University of Ljubljana. My achievements, as Matea said, I'm the founder and director of Tax Felix firm, which was established, established uh, uh, which established a legal business portal with our own knowledge and today represents the central portal with up-to-date legal tax and financial information in Slovenia. And besides that, e-publishing and developed professional training. In addition, I'm columnist in Tefal Glasnik. This is our e-media, which is weekly. Uh, and we have conducted over 250 interviews with prominent individuals. And every year we organize this also the selection of the most distinguished tax, financial, and legal expert. Awards, what I have till now. <laughs> the Chamber of Commerce Special Economic Achievement Award. This was in 2001, and this is the most important award in Slovenia for firms. Uh, and then second, Beta Gamma Sigma, BGS recognition for the achievements of economics faculty students who were successful in business. This organization was founded in USA, and these I've got last year. Now about the company. Um, company was established in 204. When we planned uh, this firm, our goal, goal was focused on development on the portal, where all Slovenian valid legislation would be at one place, all laws and regulation would be in consolidated texts, integrated with special search engine to assure to customers usage one click only and get up-to-date information. Maybe on this place, a little history also. We established similar firm before, in the very beginning of the uh, Slovenians, uh, 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 when the Slovenia was, was the country, uh, the new country in 1989, but problems with other partners caused separation and we, together with the main part of team who were devoted to legal informatics, started Taxfinex. And now what Portal Taxfinex is? is the center, central Slovenian internet place, here you have the address, where the updated legal documents are collected and connected with other documents from different fields at one place. Uh, last, in last five years, we established also four other activities. These are e-publishing, professional training, professional advice, and our own media. So what you can find in Portal Tax Felix, all valid and updated Slovenian legislation in consolidated texts, all European le legislation, core decision from all Slovenian courts, professional journal, we have 17 mag magazines, professional articles, commentary on law, e-versions and also books, document samples, manuals, dictionaries, and notifications, notification services. I will talk uh, about this a little later. Um, why the portal tax index is so important for us? Because we uh, developed it by our, uh, our know-how, as I said in the beginning, and this platform we developed um, where all these 
process and documents are connected, uh, co collected, and uh, we also developed a special search engine because this is a kind of challenge. This was a kind of challenge. Now there are different challenges. Um, data processing is also very um, important. Uh, it is going on on daily basis and updating updating immediately because the laws are changes all the time. And maybe this is important for you, colleagues. Uh, this platform is universal. What does it mean? It means that it could be adjusted for different markets. It, it just uh, has to be uh, the procedures uh, have to be just uh, adjusted, but platform is universal. Um, it because uh, each country uh, has uh, uh, legislation and documents and uh, all uh, should be in timeline for simple usage. Um, maybe here just a couple of advantages of Portal Tax Felix timeline. I said it for a couple of times now. What is this? All legislation, valid and unvalid, all laws and all other regulations are in full text in consolidated versions. Each version of law is linked by all other documents based on the, this certain legal reference, juridicals, juridical cases, tax advice articles, tax and finance forms, etc. Links and connect, connections, this is also one of the advantage. All documents are linked by appropriate documents concerning content and time version. This is important. And value added point, uh, timeline is the main value added, especially because of demonstration, the smaller part of law, such as article or alinea, in versions in Thailand, which is worldwide excellent technological and informatic solution. What does it mean in simple words? We control the smaller part of text in each document of law, and then we can manage this in Thailand or everywhere. Now we will see a couple of slides how the portal uh, look, uh, this is our website, uh, web uh, site when we come to portal. And I set a lot of timeline. How is it look? You can see now on slide. Here is a, one example of one law. And you see here graphic timeline. Here you see that this law was changing a lot we have 61 versions and now we are on 61 version and if uh, this is uh, this timelines these are also all impacts what exactly impacts on this text here and here is how the consolidated text of this law look here on left side we have all the connections, uh, these are articles, professional articles, commentaries, um, different uh, magazines, articles, everything what is connected directly to this part of laws. On this side, the uh, right side, we can have our own commentaries. This is very important because we can work also in group and Colleagues can change their opinions, everything. Everything stays here and it's like a, one internal system of communication. Next service we, uh, we uh, developed is notification service. What does it mean? Um, as I said, legislation and all laws, regula regulations, everything is changing all the time. And uh, we want to um, uh, inform our users every day about uh, these changes in legislation 
also we have these two uh, two different services one is called lex radar other lex clipping and you see here um, all this data that users uh, get and the third service is company check where uh, we also inform our clients about company solvency we have databases about all compa companies in Slovenia and we have control uh, information in what kind of positions uh, those companies are. This is not exactly legislation, but it's another service uh, which we put in the, let's say, uh, department of notification service. Next activity uh, which we developed is e-publishing especially commentary on the law and professional lecture. This is how is this seen on the portal, but in concrete document documents uh, is like you, you see, um, commentary of law is, I don't know how is it seen, but every article of law is commented by uh, distinguished authors. Um, we uh, also publish, this is the only exception because we are internet firm, 100%, but here is one uh, uh, exception, uh, commentaries, we uh, also publish in books, versions because clients want also in this uh, versions too. Uh, besides we have uh, 70 professional journals and uh, we have also all um, contracts with uh, uh, publishers and we can publish those articles and connect them to the uh, appropriate law or uh, regulations. Next activity is professional training. Um, we are very proud on this activity and colleague, my colleague who helped me here, this is Katya, <laughs> uh, uh, is the leader of um, professional training. Um, and of course, the training is on different fields which we uh, have, legislation, um, labor uh, law, um, what else, finance, accountancy, taxes. And uh, we organize different, different, different events. This is uh, uh, some pictures of them, and maybe just uh, to 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 see what we have done last year. Uh, we organize six conferences, in-house training, free seminars, seminar schools, and our workshops. So it's hundred event and more than two thousand participants. And uh, professional advice, of course, it's almost logical, I would say, that we have also this kind of service uh, for our clients and also from the field of um, legal, uh, finance, taxes, mostly. And uh, our own media, what does it mean? We have a lot of information, as you see, and so we developed um, free or, or mainly not two uh, main media. This is daily, daily email, e, uh, e media daily called Lex Novice and weekly Tuffle Glasnik. Lex Novice are, um, are news from uh, legislation and changes of legislation and something like that. But Tuffle Glasnik is our journal, our professional journal with interviews, professional articles. And here you can see those interviews uh, with those distinguished people. There's a lot of these and articles. Uh, and this is all uh, free, for free. It was meant when we uh, developed that to uh, promote our portal more. But now it's uh, it is also still free, but it's uh, really um, a lot of clients. Right? Forty thousand for Slovenian market is a lot. 
Uh, okay, this event is one time per year and we preparing selection of the most distinguished tax, financial and legal expert. And we are doing this for 80 years. Uh, and uh, each year is, uh, this is a kind of nice event. <laughs> well, this was uh, uh, in a quick words about the portal, about uh, what we have, but I think that we are all in business, so we uh, need to see also numbers. First, numbers about how many laws are that is valid in Slovenia today. We also developed one the, um, service called Legislative Supervisor and is online and is all uh, the time is updating. And today I look before I, I correct this uh, because yesterday the number was numbers was different. Today is in Slovenia is valid 744 uh, laws and 21. 333 reg uh, reg uh, regulations, sorry, with, uh, uh, or bylaws. I don't know how you call this exactly. And uh, what we have in portal, we have million documents, very structured million documents. Uh, and of, of them, uh, there are 500,000 laws and regulations. 4,000 uh, uh, 4, 10,000 uh, 10, court decisions. These are all Slovenian courts and Euro, Euro, uh, European courts decisions. Then 70,000 commentary samples, financial agency explanations, and also other documents. And 20,000 documents concerning legislative process. So huge huge uh, number of documents. And also other uh, numbers, of course, sales. Our sales model is uh, 24, sorry, months, I see months, this uh, subscription binding. This is very comfort uh, sales model because we can plan, uh, of course, our uh, cash flow in advance, and then what is new sales is also fine. Uh, and then our maybe uh, our results for last year, total income million and seven hundred thousand euro profit hundred and ninety thousand euro. Um, our clients. First, we, we have different uh, clients. First number of registered, users, these are not um, subscribers, just registered, 40,000. That is, this is the number we, uh, we are sending our media to their email addresses. Then subscribers, we have 1,000 subscribers, but number of users is 9,000 uh, because some subscribers have many, many more users. And uh, different products and service we have, this is, about 20 of them. Who are our main clients? Supreme Court, we are very proud to that because they, they represent all of Slovenian courts and we have uh, contracts for five years with them. Then attorneys, prosecutors, and in companies, legal departments, HR departments, accounting departments, and of course, public sector. Uh, ministries, agencies, etc. And what is the most, most important? Our team, of course. Be without all those people, there will be nothing. Uh, today, we have 20 people employed. Their profile, IT experts, lawyers, economists, mostly. Average year, uh, 39 and comma <laughs> 7. I just... Uh, make this calculation for this presentation. Uh, that is why it's so exact. Um, and a level of their education is university level of education, almost, I think, because we really need so those uh, exper experts from different fields of knowledge. And the most important for me is that we have the excellent cooperation and understanding. And 
what was the last slide? What next? What are the plans? Of course, artificial intelligence is definitely next step. Um, uh, I will not talk now about chat GPT and so on, but for us is important this fact. How can we implement artificial intelligence to those million documents and make them more well to user? Uh, we uh, started development, of course, and our goal here is that we need to implement in uh, uh, artificial intelligence in all databases the contextual chat who will be able to offer correct and exact answer and solution in legal field of information. I know that there is a long story, for, uh, the, the, there is a long uh, way to this goal, but of course those uh, knowledge from artificial in intelligence is now developing so quickly, daily, I could say, that, I, uh, and that we are quite an optimist and our first developments, um, uh, we achieved quite good results till now. And that is all from me. Thank you for your attention. And here are my contacts. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ms. Archer. I'm presenting text in likes. Uh, I would just like to ask some questions now. Yeah. Um, everything you have done by now is 100% from Slovenian knowledge? Yes, yes, definitely. We developed everything by our own knowledge, definitely. And you have said that the platform is universal and can be implemented in all countries. Uh, only the regulation, regulatory processing uh, procedure need to be adjusted. Have you already offered it to other countries? Yes, we did. We did in 206. We wanted to start this business in Croatia, but uh, okay, we started it, but uh, unfortunately this market was not prepared for such kind of advanced service. Um, in this time, the Croatia <laughs> has a lot of problems also with uh, internet services and everything uh, goes uh, went so so slow then then we uh, stopped with this business in uh, Croatia but uh, of course uh, maybe today it's also it could be the um, it's actual uh, uh, for many other countries also uh, we developed a lot uh, uh, other services too and we can offer this special I would say business model to uh, let's say countries all, all over the world and the last question I have so many companies uh, contact us regarding possible investments in Slovenia can you Please share with us a little basic tax, taxes information. Yes, I prepared one slide on this uh, uh, um, uh, in this field of information. <laughs> it is not perfect, of course, but there are some uh, uh, some I would say basic information could who, which could be interesting for the audience. Uh, tax legislation in Slovenia we have as I guess in other countries too, personal taxes. Uh, this means that salaries uh, have um, from 16% to 50% um, taxes. Here is the table you see, and this is uh, the, uh, this, um, how would say, uh, uh, these percents and, uh, uh, here are the here written the percent of personal taxes. Maybe this will be interesting too. How is minimum salary and average salary? Minimum salary, gross salary is to is one hundred and two hundred uh, one thousand and two hundred and more euro and net uh, eight hundred and 
78, and average salary is more than 2,000 and net uh, 1,300. Uh, then we have next tax is value added tax. And in general, it is the uh, degree is 22%. Of course, there are some exceptions, but I didn't go in these details in, uh, on this presentation. And then we have corporate income tax, profit tax, more, <laughs> more popular. And this is 19%. Uh, maybe just this information also, um, 7,500 euro is needed to found uh, a firm, this is founding capital, and um, what is fine is that the starting is very quickly, I think that uh, you need a couple of days and you can have a firm in Slovenia. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Lata Taucher, for these useful insights and your presentation. I'll make sure that all will be shared among our, con our participants, all your contacts and your presentation. Uh, anyone from the attendees has any question for our guest, Lata Taucher? Uh, hello. Uh, yes, I have a couple of questions. Yes, please, Kimo, go ahead. Uh, thank you. Um, so my question is uh, regarding the, you emphasized that the uh, search engine was the most challenging part in developing your business. And my question is, like, uh, when you started the business, uh, was the the person uh, who was developing the search engine like in integral part of your team or you outsourced it and then uh, gradually as you progressed you also employed uh, IT specialists or how 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 that came by if you understand mm -hmm. okay yeah uh, yes search engine was important of course uh, and um, uh, and all development, IT development complete. This is data processing, uh, getting information, data processing, editing uh, information, publishing information, archiving information, searching information. Everything uh, we uh, we made by our team, definitely. No, no outsourcing because uh, and till now. I never, I would never have outsourcing of IT services. Why? Because uh, this is so uh, um, everything connected together that it's impossible to have outsourcing of such kind of specialist special services as we have. Uh, search engine, yes, it is important. Maybe I. Uh, I don't know. I emphasize it a lot because it is important, but. M much more important is editing, uh, 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 not editing, uh, processing um, uh, databases because uh, we developed these uh, tools for our lawyers to prepare consolidated text and this should be really very precise. A lot of details is exceptions and everything and I would not this uh, it's a lot of work inside and this is the most important part of this uh, IT solution uh, so if if I understand correctly you you said that they have like um, uh, approximately one million documents and 400 core decisions in your database and then through your um, search engine and data processing, you are uh, able to provide your customers with exact information from this uh, from such documents from this database that you obtain. Is that yes. correct? Yes, correct. Okay. And um, so, and my, also my final questions: uh, Do you do you have any competitors on the Slovenian market? Yes, our forum firm. Yes. <laughs> Uh, as I said before, this is our, our main competitor. 
We are just two two firms which we are um, uh, working on these services. But okay. we are growing each year, I would say about 10 or 15 percent per year because we have strong uh, goal and uh, I would say development team <clears throat> so strong that we have a lot of ideas and uh, each year uh, comes more and more new products on the market. Thank you very much. Thank you, Timo Zupancic, for your questions. Now I'd like to give a word to Deborah Barambolshali, please. Good morning again. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, it's a pleasure to see everybody here, and uh, in particular, my friend Sonia from Canada. I haven't seen her for a long time, so it's a pleasure to meet her in this platform, which is absolutely fantastic. Uh, my question is, uh, what's the idea of the company's internationalization? How do you see that? Uh, do you think of uh, exporting technology, having local representations? How do you think it would work for you to internationalize the company? Thank you. Yes, this, this, this is a very interesting question. Uh, I think that many uh, business model could be appropriate, but uh, one of them is uh, and this we wanted to create in Croatia. We invest uh, money together with other uh, Croatian firm and we establish uh, um, um, a team and uh, starting uh, uh, um, processing all uh, consolidated tests and so on, texts and so on. And we give our know-how and platform there. And then uh, how to uh, we prepare sales model. Um, we uh, we um, just go to, we went to market and one by one we are selling and this is the long procedure which is not fine here we would be better business model that we can um, that we can contribute our know-how and maybe um, a kind of uh, that maybe better will be that maybe government come to this uh, uh, let's say project and uh, finance for each country all these um, uh, uh, costs, uh, uh, processing data, and so on. And this will be much um, cheaper and much quicker to come to the market. And this is better if, uh, if it will be uh, possible. Thank you for all the questions and the answers, uh, Ms. Thatcher. Uh, I would just like you to ask to stop sharing in okay. order for us to put another presentation. Please. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now I would like to welcome our second guest, who is no stranger to us, a very loyal participant of Slovenian businesswoman around the globe events. Uh, Slovenian Canadian Sonia Maria. Rosenwald, founder of Adventis uh, Strategic uh, Management uh, and the executive director of the Canadian Slovenian Chamber of Commerce. Thank you for being here with us and presenting and please go ahead with your presentation. Uh, thank you, Matea. First, I will put my presentation up. I want to uh, welcome all the women and gentlemen that are on the uh, webinar today. When I just have to interrupt a little bit, there's something wrong with your microphone. I don't know oh. if, it's only, if it's only me that I don't hear. Can you hear me? Yeah, it's, can, it's, can everybody it's hear me or no? It's vibrating at the same time. When you speak, it's... Uh, the internet is unstable. Uh, how is it now? Okay, we're gonna do the following. Hello, Sonia. Okay. We're gonna ask you to leave the meeting uh, now and come back. Okay. okay. Because it's now it's not working. Before it was working. It's much better. Is it working now? No. It's, it's not working it's now. Weird. 
it's a weird sound. <laughs> oh. Table. So what I suggest okay. you leave, yeah, it's no problem. So maybe if you leave and come back, and then we will let you in again. So I'm going to take this opportunity and see if there's anyone else that would like to uh, make any comments, suggestions, uh, questions to Ms. Dalcha. Um, Margaret here. Hi, Margaret. Yes, hi. OK, make hi. sure I'm on. Um, of course, you know, I'm in Canada, and I often get questions from clients about property matters in Slovenia. And I'm thinking this would be a great company to refer them to um, for questions regarding legislation or, or you know, inheritance issues. I would just like to confirm with our presenter, inheritance questions and legislation. Is that an appropriate topic for research with your database? Uh, well, um... I don't know, maybe. <laughs> yeah, it's a broad one, yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe. It's difficult difficult to say. Uh, we really, uh, now we are focused on uh, all the legislation as I described yeah. this. Yeah. And uh, maybe in this advice uh, uh, sector uh, um, could do something like that now. Okay, so it's not it's a it's good for me to refer them to you when when they ask me very specific questions, which I don't have the knowledge to yeah, answer. Definitely, definitely, we we have here in advice um, uh, uh, sector we have uh, besides our lawyers here in the team uh, we have also a connection with all distinguished uh, attorneys. And then if we can't uh, by ourselves solve uh, some problems, then we also uh, contact them and you will get the right answer, definitely. Okay. Thank you, Madam Taucha. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, does this... We, we have does it, now and now does, I... does it work now? Perfect. Can you hear me? Oh, yes. good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what I was saying is I won't start uh, my slides right now, right away. I want to just introduce myself. Uh, and actually, before that, I want to con congratulate Mateja Peroshek uh, on a wonderful series uh, to congratulate and to showcase uh, Slovenian women globally. Uh, mm -hmm. This has been a wonderful, wonderful experience to see. Uh, see the women and uh, the accomplishments that they've uh, got around the world. And uh, hello to everybody that uh, has joined that I've met before and uh, welcome to the new ones that I don't know. <laughs> so I'm the executive director of the Canadian Slovenian Chamber of Commerce and president and co-founder of my company, Advanta Strategic Management. What is Advanta Strategic Management? We are a project management company. And before that, before I, we established the company, uh, I have over 25 years of leading or managing national projects for telecommunication, uh, consumer pro product uh, goods, and healthcare sectors. Throughout my career, I've had the opportunity to experience many different business sectors, and I've had many roles which has resulted in a very broad-minded approach to business opportunities and to, to different, uh, different actually even countries and that. So I, I've had the opportunity to work with uh, clients in the US. Uh, I manufactured uh, products in Hong Kong and India. So um, I have an extremely broad uh, background so my very diverse background affords me with the ability to be highly adaptable and relatable to most business environments and cultures. I've led new product development initiatives for several Canadian and U.S. consumer product goods companies. I worked with uh, Maybelline, with L'Oreal. I worked with uh, a more than a handful of food companies, uh, which had, uh, which I worked on their entry into Canada from the US mostly, uh, and a couple of German companies in my background. Uh, that's what happens uh, when you're in business for a long time. Uh, and, my, and I had major project initiatives for Cineplex. Cineplex is one of our uh, 
biggest media companies in Canada. Uh, they have movie theaters as well as uh, they have a digital uh, network across Canada. They work with different advertising agencies where uh, they have screens in public places. So I worked with them on installations in shopping malls, in uh, subways, etc. So uh, I have it goes back to my diverse background, which uh, I can't uh, can't uh, summarize in half an hour. So my industry experience, as I said, consumer packaged goods, uh, private label and national brands. Um, I almost feel like I was there at the beginning of private label. That's when companies uh, here in North America, as well as Europe, uh, decided to take uh, products in-house to increase their bottom line. And uh, as a result, it uh, actually had a nice impact on consumer goods pricing uh, in that it kept prices at a level that was uh, lower than what it would have been without private label coming into into the picture. But that's a whole whole uh, other study that we can do at some time. Uh, I was in retail, so I worked with uh, drug stores, food stores. I managed a warehouse and uh, the beginnings uh, just to just to make uh, people understand that there's a lot of opportunities, I guess, in Canada. Uh, I first thing that I worked for was a rubber company that uh, manufactured for the automotive trucking and printing industry. So um, I can't even begin. I think uh, I sent Matea my CV and I'm sure uh, she had trouble trying to summarize what the heck. <laughs> What the heck? How do I do this? How do I uh, introduce uh, the speaker? Uh, but anyway, so my leadership roles, I have over five years of governance experience as a board member and vice president of the vice of the Slovenian Linden Foundation, which operates a long term care facility with several levels of res resident care. Uh, that's here in Toronto. And that brought me back into the Slovenian community. And that's what I really wanted to, to really emphasize today is uh, they say that a village, you need a village to bring up a child. Uh, I think you need a community to ensure that a person has the confidence to move forward and to excel. That's in their life as well as in business. So the community that is very important to me is the Slovenian community. And I'm so happy and so pleased that I can give back to the community at this time in my life. So this has brought me to my current uh, stage where I'm the executive director, as I said, of the Canadian Slovenian Chamber of Commerce. And uh, we lead initiatives to connect and promote bilateral Slovenian and Canadian commerce across Canada and globally. Um, I have the privilege of being connected with Matea and uh, with uh, Dr. Chalet from SGBM. So uh, we had, uh, we were able to actually reach outside of Canada and Slovenia into Brazil. And I, I'm so uh, honored that we've been able to, to grow. So let me give you a little bit of a background on Advantis, just so that you know uh, a little bit about that. I'll just uh, share this. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Advantis was founded in 2007 by Dr. Wayne Stamler and myself. We have a combined over 25 years experience in strategic planning, structuring and delivering complex initiatives that impact the consumer, the customer experience at multiple touch points. We typically work with a range of stakeholders and report to senior leadership team. The linkages between leadership, culture, strategy, innovation and performance provide the context in which we assess project management capabilities and the potential impact to a company's business model. We, we review their change plan and provide recommendations to ensure their initiative is supported by a robust project plan to deliver de desired results. 
we all, uh, what, one of the first things you learn as a project manager is that planning is so important. 80% of projects uh, fail if a plan is not well thought out and well done. And that is where you sometimes need a professional to come in and give you an overview and be able to give you a proper plan or even just to assess the plan that you have. And that's where they bring a company like myself uh, into, into their organization. So by providing an objective review of current or proposed initiatives within a strategic context, we facilitate discussions among key stakeholders to evaluate the best approach for their important initiative. So just, uh, I won't take you through all the projects that we've done. Uh, one of the most impressive and the one, uh, one of the ones that we're very, very uh, proud of is uh, we led the rebranding for Canada's largest telecommunication company, which is Rogers Communications. As project management professionals, we're process driven. The strategies we developed were fact based, comprehensive, practical, and implementable. Our main objective is to implement enterprise rebranding in the most expedient and efficient manner possible. So, who brought us in? The uh, marketing department of uh, Rogers Communication head office brought us in. And uh, we worked with their partners. Uh, we are not alone. We subcontract. So we brought in a uh, signage company. Uh, we brought in the number one signage company. It ended up we uh, did a, a RFP. And uh, when we brought in uh, about 10 different companies, we, did an, we made an assessment with the leadership team at Rogers Communications. And we chose uh, the number one company, which is Padas and Signage, uh, to start this monumental task of rebranding their stores. Uh, Rogers has 540 locations and they wanted to uh, rebrand the outdoor signage first and then the indoor uh, eventually later. We were involved with the outdoor signage. Uh, and it was across Canada, and uh, I don't know if you know that much about Canada. We have uh, five markers, five or six uh, time zones that we have across Canada. Uh, uh, different uh, cultures. Uh, big country has uh, also different cultures and different uh, provinces that uh, we dealt with. Uh, and of course, we all the difference has stakeholders, many, many stakeholders that you can imagine. Uh, we had uh, we had the landlords, of course, of the different properties. We had the on, the people that actually were uh, the uh, that actually had the uh, Rogers stores uh, head office had to had to prove everything. We actually created a portal uh, approval portal so that uh, we could streamline uh, just the approvals that we had to have done. Uh, and then we also did FIDO, which is another subsidiary of Rogers Telecommunications. They had 84 uh, locations. It was about six months into the project. Uh, that's the thing that you have to uh, be very adaptable when you're a project manager. And I think my background made it simpler. Uh, assuming that change is inevitable. So about six months in, the, the FIDO uh, folks came up with uh, their strategy and their decision to rebrand their stores, which was another 84 on top. And uh, we actually piggybacked uh, that installation project onto the 540. Uh, this monumental uh, project was extremely satisfying. Uh, there was lots of hiccups that we overcame together, and that was uh, that was through great communication, and that's something that that is very important to uh, as a project manager and as a consultant or actually in business is communication. So uh, we we actually uh, we had a great uh, team of of, of uh, people, and then. Um, we can say that uh, we're very proud that we actually accomplished this in two and a half years, which was uh, on time. We were on budget and uh, we had a very happy client. So anyway, um, the most common reasons our clients undertake brand change and require a new brand ident identity is the need or desire to renew the brand due to competitive pressures, 
the result of a merger, acquisition, or consolidation, where a legal requirement or mandated re regulatory compliance must be fulfilled, or to enhance brand positioning by adopting a new brand promise and the need to signal a change in brand values to the marketplace and shareholders. Uh, this project uh, actually entailed all three reasons. So what happens? Uh, so I just wanted to share that about Advantis. Uh, what I have, what what happened uh, is, uh, although we were very very uh, successful and we continued with projects, uh, I can say that COVID actually was a big change for our company. Uh, consultants were not being hired in uh, twenty. 20, the middle of 2020, 2021, um, rebranding uh, changes were halted. And at that time, uh, the opportunity came where um, actually Mr. John Doma, who's our president, consulted me and contacted me and said, uh, would you be interested in coming to the Canadian Slovenian Chamber of Commerce and helping us relaunch it? So that is what brought me back to, uh, to this, to the next opportunity. And uh, I was very happy to uh, come and join. And I thought, okay, I'll join for about a year in 2020, 2021, and just get everything going. And here I am in 2023, and I'm very proud to still be involved. And uh, through it, uh, because of COVID, it was... Uh, there is hardship from COVID, but there's also opportunities. The opportunity that uh, came with that was actually back to communication, um, learning to communicate in a different way and actually being able to reach out to more of the Slovenian community. Uh, one of them being, uh, you know, Dr. Chalet out in Brazil and uh, we talked, uh, I think in 2020, February 2021 was the first time that I heard, uh, you know, heard about SGBN and the idea that uh, Dr. Chalet had of, of uh, this global business network. And I said, yes, you know, that's what I think uh, the Canadian Slovenian Chamber of Commerce has to be a part of. And I think it's important that we have the Slovenian community uh, globally working together to support each other and to, and to promote each other. So I said, yes, you know, let, let's, uh, let's, let's work together. So uh, we've, we've been in touch and met uh, Matea, of course, through there. And uh, here we are. So what is the Canadian Slovenian Chamber of Commerce? The Slovenian Chamber of Commerce was established in 1990 because of the shared Slovenian heritage, that was the basis of the first founders, was to, was to promote and to share this heritage and to have a Canadian-centered network of businesses and professionals. What we offer is a verified business connection, the ability to provide warm introductions. Nothing is better than having someone introduced so that you know that you have that first foot in the door and you have the ability to connect. And the Chamber provides access to a wide range of expertise through our associations with professionals. Uh, we don't, we, uh, we have professionals much like uh, Mrs. Toucher's uh, company. Uh, we have lawyers, we have accountants. Uh, we are a nonprofit, so we, it's not that they are under our roof, but they are in our network. So we provide the connections. So <coughs> with uh, Mrs. Toucher's uh, organization, we would connect anyone that would want information and to connect with uh, Slovenian law firms or, or accountants. So, excuse me, sorry. So our mandate, our mandate is to stimulate bilateral business opportunities with potential clients, investors, and affiliates. We're the logical step to establishing a Canadian North American presence. We promote CETA because it's enabling better commerce opportunities for Slovenia. <coughs> Um, Simon Pribac, uh, we work uh, also with the Slovenian 
embassy here in Canada. We're very fortunate to have a good relationship with them. And actually uh, their trade commissioner, Simon Pribas and I have done several different uh, presentations in Slovenia so that uh, companies can learn about CETA and the opportunities uh, because customs duties have been removed. Uh, we have enhanced labor mobility, regulatory cooperation, fair treatment of investments and an increased access to government procurement. We're actually EU countries uh, through CETA can uh, compete and can enter our uh, job market and also, of course, uh, do, uh, do business with, with Canada much more easily. So as I said, we are a nonprofit member organization and in Slovenia, or in Canada, sorry, there's approximately 30,000 Slovenians and their descendants. And the majority of Slovenian Canadians live in Ontario, which is where we are located. Early Slovenians settled across Canada in all the provinces. They went to where the jobs were and they brought their knowledge and skills from Slovenia to thrive in many different sectors of commerce. The Chamber is dedicated to work with the Slovenian community across Canada, and we look forward to promoting and supporting our heritage and culture as well as commerce. The Chamber today has 10 board members, and I'm the Executive Director. Everyone is active in business and in the Slovenian community, and especially Dr. Mr. John Doma, our President, who's also the Honorary General Consul for Slovenia in Ontario, and treasurer on the Euro European Union Chamber of Commerce. Out West, uh, we have uh, Dr. Margaret Rudolph, who's uh, on the call today, and she's the honorary Slovenian consul for BC. And we're fortunate to be able to work with uh, her to have a more Canada-wide perspective. And uh, I don't know, Margaret, if you wanted to say anything about, uh, about BC at this juncture, if I'm allowed to, just a, a few minutes, just to confirm Sonia's excellent work in reaching out to uh, our part of uh, Canada. As you know, much like Brazil, we're huge and different time zones, different uh, economic circumstances. And in uh, British Columbia, we don't have that many Slovenians. We're only about four and a half thousand. So the challenge is to make people aware of the existence of Slovenia, its opportunities, its business networks. And uh, we're working very closely with Simon Pribach, of course, as Sonia said, of the uh, embassy. He's an excellent trade commissioner, very active, and uh, certainly the ambassador and the team in Ottawa is fantastic. So we work very hard. Um, I uh, decided to post all my consular activities on LinkedIn. So if you want to see the sorts of things that I do at the, at the consular level to promote Slovenia, take a look at my LinkedIn under my name. And uh, if ever you have ideas on how we can better integrate uh, this part of Canada with Sonia's work and internationally, uh, I'm, I'd be very happy to hear from you. So um, I'll pass this back on to Sonia. Um, and thank you for giving me this opportunity to say a few words from this part no. of Canada. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Margaret. Um, actually, we, uh, if you, uh, we have actually a YouTube channel where uh, I have posted uh, the webinars that we did. And one of the very fascinating webinars that we did was uh, about uh, British Columbia. There's so many so many similarities between Slovenia and British Columbia that, that it's uh, just overwhelming. Uh, the culture, the, the land, and, and the attitude, of course, out there. So uh, please, uh, please take a look at our YouTube channel sometime. And hopefully uh, this year we'll do another repeat to uh, introduce British Columbia opportunities for Slovenians again. Uh, so we have 90 members from Canada, Slovenia, USA, and Brazil. And we have more than 20 associates from Canadian Slovenian organizations, global Slovenian organizations, and European U Union affiliates. We're funded by Spirit Slovenia and by the Office of the Government of the Republic of Slovenia for Slovenes Abroad and for the Council. These are board members. Uh, as I said, uh, everyone is a distinguished member 
of of their of their sector. Uh, John Doma has a accounting firm. Uh, I can't go through everybody, but everyone uh, is a very well established professional. Uh, we also have uh, Katya Martz, who is uh, in Montreal, Quebec, and she is a director at McGill University. Uh, and and it, with a big with an engineering background, uh, and we're very proud uh, of the people that we have representing the chamber. Uh, they in turn, of course, have their network as well, uh, which uh, which really uh, gives our reach uh, across Canada and also into Europe, etc. Uh, Tim Sesnick uh, and John Doma will actually we're going to be presenting them in a webinar uh, shortly in. Uh, actually April 12th, so I invite you to come uh, come and hear what they have to say. Uh, Tim Sesnick is also, also an author and he's a weekly column, columnist in our uh, business newspaper here in Canada, uh, The Globe and Mail too. So our associates are, are uh, across Canada. Um, also, of course, you see there, uh, that we have uh, the Slovenian Global Business Network, Slobras in Brazil. Uh, I had the opportunity to go to Argentina, so uh, it was nice to meet uh, the Slovenian uh, community there. And uh, we're very, very proud of what we've accomplished. So for the first time in its history, the Chamber was active on four continents. Uh, we were in person in Europe, in Asia, at Dubai, at the Dubai Slovenia exhibit. Uh, of course, North America, we are uh, involved across Canada and uh, we are reaching out to the US. We have to do, uh, we realize we have to do more work there. Uh, the chamber was recognized as the most influential, influential and visible Canadian non-government organization in Slovenia and we're in the top five global Slovenian organizations. We're recognized for promoting diverse business sectors from AI, finance and legal to active tourism. And for the first time in Canada, we brought Slovenian wines uh, to the LCBO. LCBO is the Liquor Control Board of Ontario, which is the world's largest purchaser of spirits. And uh, we're very proud that we've been able to accomplish that. Uh, and we're pushing harder to get uh, more, more wines into Canada. Uh, we're in social media. So our social media, uh, we're very active uh, on our website. It's updated with our directory. Uh, we have events that we post there. Uh, we have a Facebook page with 642 followers and LinkedIn, uh, we have over 400 followers. I, I'd really like to invite you to come see our YouTube channel because I'm very happy there that we have the videos that we've, uh, where we've interviewed different companies and we've promoted opportunities for Slovenians in Canada. Business Insight is what it's called. Uh, we have the Zoom events that we had. So one of them was return to travel, Slovenia and Europe. Uh, in May, we're going to do another travel event with a Slovenian company that is working all over the world uh, and one of our very distinguished members. Uh, and they'll talk about cultural tourism as well as a very active tourism as well. Um, it's already one o'clock, so I won't take you through everything. Um, so what we do, like I said, we promote and support bilateral Slovenian Canadian business opportunities. And what we do is we showcase the diversity of Slovenian commerce. Uh, Slovenia is an amazing country that we are so proud of, but Canadians uh, have to be educated about the opportunities that are there for them. And I think Slovenians also have to be educated to know that there's opportunities for them here in Canada. So uh, that's what we, we try to do through the different, uh, different ways uh, that we do here. And um, that's, uh, that's about all I have to say today. <laughs> and thank you, Matea, for giving us uh, the opportunity. Okay, thank you. And congratulations on all your activities. Uh, really, Sony is really engaged 
into Slovenian community in Brazil, uh, in Canada, and also uh, collaborating with us here in Brazil. Uh, let me just quickly ask one question. Uh, okay, um, what do you and the Canadian Slovenian Chamber of Commerce plan for the future? Uh, we plan to continue, of course, with our with our reach. Uh, we plan to uh, expand, expand uh, our opportunities, and work hand in hand with, of course, uh, the Slovenian embassy here with the Slovenian. Uh, organizations in Slovenia. Uh, we're very proud to be partnering with uh, the Slovenian Global Business Network. So we hope to uh, work with them and uh, continue as we have. I hope uh, eventually that uh, we have a successor that will continue with this and, and uh, the chamber will be here 20 years from now. <laughs> Thank you very much, Sonia. Uh, do any of uh, our participants today have any questions they'd like to ask Sonia or share? You can now all open your mi microphones. Uh, please, uh, no, Deborah, Deborah, Ali, go ahead. I'm sorry, Matthias. Again. Again. Yeah, one of you has to. First of all, I'd like to say that I'm really impressed by Sonia's achievements. She's fantastic and she makes us so proud. Uh, it's really very nice to see a Slovenian woman working in such a high level and uh, producing such fantastic results. So I just wanted to say that uh, I'm very proud to count her among our friends here. <laughs> and I'd like to ask uh, Sonia, uh, because she said, uh, we share this common view that the Slovenian global uh, business is uh, our shtetl, our Slovenian shtetl in the world. That's uh, our uh, little village uh, uh, where we feel safe among Slovenians, among friends to move forward in our business. And with that perspective, um, that uh, view that we share, I'd like to ask Sonia, what would she expect in the future from Slovenian Global? What would you like to see Slovenian Global do? What should be our next steps? Thank you. Um, I think uh, the, the direction that you are heading, where you are uniting and you're identifying companies and professionals around the world. I think uh, the direction that you are going is something that you should uh, keep that trajectory. And uh, I think uh, I know that uh, you have worked on the, the global uh, business map. And I think uh, expanding that around the world and, and how we can help you with that, I think that's, uh, that's, that's the most important, is those connections. And I think uh, that's that's all. And uh, I know uh, the webinars that you had in the past where you had people from Japan, you had people from Africa, uh, you're touching all the continents in the world. And, and that's uh, so commendable. And I, I'm very proud of the accomplishments that SGBN ha has uh, done in what, how many, three years. So it's incredible, or two years. So I hope that trajectory continues. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Chale, and uh, thank you uh, very much, Sonia, for being here as well and presenting. Uh, so this our meeting finishes here. If anyone else wants to make comment or add questions or anything, now is the time. Uh, but I would like to uh, take this opportunity and thank to our special guests speakers uh, Zlata and Sonia for being here with us, accepting this invitation of Slovenian uh, businesswomen around the globe, uh, authored uh, Slovenian Global Business Network. Uh, I'd like to thank each one of you attending this event from everywhere, from Paris, from Vancouver, from Canada, from where Sonia is. Where are you, Sonia, exactly? Where are you at? Where, where are you? 
Oh. I'm in Toronto, Toronto, Toronto. Ontario, Canada. <laughs> and uh, Rotterdam, Brazil. Uh, special thanks to, of course, uh, to co-financer of this series, Government's Office, uh, Republic Slovenia, for studies abroad. And to all the organizers of this series, uh, Skozar uh, Legal Venture, Slovenian Global Business Network, Zavot Viden, and Future Female Slovenia. Stay tuned for the next coming Slovenian Business Woman Around the Globe event hosted by Teja, I think, and her team from Zavot Viden. So we we'll let you know soon when and wh when it's going to be the event, which date. So thank you again. Everyone, it's nice to see you again and uh, this opportunity to host this wonderful event that we started in 2021, in March exactly, on uh, International Women's Day. So congratulations again to all the women out there, business women, leaders. Thank you for existing. Thank you for invitation. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Matea. Pleasure to meet you, Zlata, too. Yes. <laughs> Zlata, again. Be in touch, everyone. Take care. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye and thank you. Bye, Manuela. Thank you for coming. <laughs>